Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCC channel. Um, let's uh, solve another lead code question. Mm, find words that can be formed by characters. You know what? I think we've done uh, enough stuff when it comes to string manipulation lately and they're always kind of finicky. Not that I'm against it, I just think we need kind of like a change, change of pace. So let's, uh, I don't know, let's go this way, something that is widely accepted by others. Arrange some of BA's DST in binary search trees, eh? Hmm. Minimum time visiting all points. That's some traversal stuff, I guess. Um, remove outmost parentheses. Again. Uh, mm -hmm. I said I don't want strings, and so now I'm kind of like, okay, I like some of those stringy <laughs> questions. Uh, sort array by parity. Let's see that one. So, 905, nine sort array by parity. Given an array A uh, containing integers of non negative integers, right? Return an array consi uh, consisting of all the even elements of A, followed by all the odd elements of A. You may return any answer array that satisfies this condition. So it means that I don't really have to order the odd, even and odd ones uh, inside that that array, right? Um, for example, we have an input, we have an odd, odd, even, even, and we start. We have to actually start with the even ones and then the odd ones. And that is all. Um, how do we achieve that? We could theoretically go um, and do basically two runs, right? Uh, one run would go and just take ev everything, would look for even ones, not even, then not even. Okay, that's an even one. Just take it out, go to the next one, even. Okay, take this one as well. And then an a second run, looking for a knot, and then a knot, and so, and so on. But I think we could do it actually better. And what I mean by that, um, I'm thinking about doing prepend, append, and I'm not sure if we can actually do this in Python. So I'm just going to Google, and then I'll, I'm going to tell you my idea. Python prepend to list. All right. Insert at the zero index. The s dot insert form is the most common. Whenever you see it, though, it may be time cons to consider using collections DQ instead of a list. Let's see then what are collections in this case. Okay, so I did some reading um, and I just spared you the time. In the video, I think it's best for you to kind of read this this uh, part here. It's pretty useful. Um, so these deck, they're called kind of pronounced deck or deq, however you want to call it. Um, they function the way as lists would function, uh, but you can also insert elements on either side of them. You can also do everything else that a list can do, and a list can do basically these things as well. But a list. For example, if you want to insert something at uh, the very first uh, position, basically index zero, you would have to do something like this. And then after inserting the element, it will basically have to kind of populate everything else that was before uh, positioned in that list, kind of like offset everything uh, one index further, right? That's why it will take all, um, oh, I guess it will take more memory. Uh, I didn't think about it, but yeah, it's um, it's less efficient when you want to insert elements on either side uh, using list operations. That's why you, you would have a deck uh, to do that for you. And how we can do this, uh, do this, for example, for the right side, we can append, uh, we can use the append function. For the left side, we use append left. Clear, copy, count, we don't really need right now uh, these things as well. We don't really need them, but it's cool to know. For example, we can pop elements out of them. 
and stuff like that. So my plan. And I also tried to see if, actually, if it actually works, uh, importing this, uh, uh, this library because yeah, sometimes lead code is actually kind of stubborn and doesn't allow me to do this. So, so I kind of tested it out. Uh, we know it's going to work. So let's, uh, let's explain what I'm thinking about. So I will be going, basically I will, I will have a out and that will be our deck and it will contain nothing. Um, let's say max len is uh, basically a, um, a parameter that you can specify. And our deck, uh, max len will be the length of A because basically we will be getting all the items from A back into this uh, output. And so now we can do basically for element in A, right? We have elements in A, and now basically we only need to, to see if our element modulo 2 is 0. So if that's the case, it will be an even object. Then we basically just put them to the left. And then basically we do append left. Um, actually, just quickly, I think it's the other way around. Yes, I have to say out, so basically our deck, append to the left, and we'll be putting this element L, right? Because we want to put anything that is even on the left side of our uh, resulting uh, array, everything that's out on the right side. Else, because we know basically this is kind of, there are good enough constraints here that we know we're going to be dealing with integers, they're going to be positive, so the only other option is to have um, an odd number. So in this case, we'll just put that odd number on the right side. And I think this is, uh, this is our algorithm. Let's give it a try. And yeah, it is. Uh, of course, they they say they said uh, there were basically we can put them in any arbitrary position. Um, so and now in our case we put put the first one to the left, the second one further to the left. So that's why they're kind of like swapped. But that doesn't matter. The only thing that's important is that we divide anything even to the left, anything out to the right. What else? Um, anything about constraints? We know positive integers. We know the length. Let's talk about, for example, runtime. We know from the description here that uh, everything, when it comes to memory efficient appends and pops from either side, uh, and we basically also incur very low. I, I guess I, I missed the fact that it's memory efficiency but I'm uh, I'm assuming it also because everything is kind of indexed I'm, I'm assuming we are also getting constant runtime uh, when, when we are pending somebody please correct me on that uh, if that's not the case so in our case we are only running once throughout the length of our array and uh, it's basically running once there and every time we only have one single operation, right? Either this operation or this operation. So I would say our runtime is uh, basically linear in, in regards to the size of our input array. And our memory is basically, okay, we are using uh, one more uh, array for the output. So basically two times the length of the, of the input array in total but that is uh, disregarding the scalar. Uh, we, have, we are still left with a linear memory consumption. So yeah, th those are our two, two, two metrics for this algorithm. Let's see if, we get such, if it gets accepted. And it does. Uh, it's pretty fast, at least judging this execution. So yeah, I think that was it. Um, as I said, you can actually do this very nice, kind of like pragmatically and just straightforward, like just looping twice over the array. But if you think about something like this and 
right now I also learned how to use Dex. So I think um, thinking about abstract ways and trying to Google them uh, kind of brings you to, yeah, to solutions that were already implemented and these are part of the standard library. So it's actually pretty good to, to think a bit a bit outside the box, I would say, in, uh, in, in, uh, in quotes, of course, because it, it's not a, it's not a super complicated algorithm in this case, but it's it's good to, to have this direction. So yeah, that was it. Uh, I hope it was uh, useful for you guys. Um, give text a, a look and uh, see if you can actually yeah understand it and kind of like figure out how to work with them. I think they're pretty fun and I'll, I'll try using them in, um, yeah, in my work, I guess, as well. So yeah, that was it. Uh, have a good day. Stay safe and see you next time. Bye-bye.